It is my great honor and pleasure to talk to Alan Johannes. How are you doing, sir? Doing good, Keith. How are you doing? How are we holding I, up? <laughs> holding up, man. We're holding up. We're keeping it. We're holding it down here in the U.S. I, I understand you're home in Chile. Yes, actually, I, I don't live here. I came back in, um, after 46 years in 2010 to meet my family that I hadn't met. You know, I'm one of those like soap opera, like, you have a real father. What? Whoa. Um, so, yeah, actually, Josh uh, convinced me it was time to meet my real dad. And then uh, Chris uh, Cornell uh, brought me in 2011. And then I stayed uh, a couple of, each time I came a little longer, had to be my family, started a band with the Fonseca brothers, my trio, you know. So I was down here just to hit uh, Lollapalooza real quick on the way out to a solo acoustic tour. And then obviously it was March. And so in, you know, a couple, three months later, I'm still here. Uh, waiting for the time where there'll be direct flights so I don't have to chance the uh, the weird idea of being in a in a in a plane uh, for 25 hours to <laughs> with people uh, you know coughing and stuff right you know, just right. in case every, every breath and sneeze will make you would make me crazy at that point I'm sure I know well, I mean, especially because I was just super sick in LA. I came back from tour, the last acoustic tour in November from Italy. And next thing you know, I'm in bed for almost two and a half months. There's like, it's bronchitis, it's pneumonia. You know, antibiotics didn't work. I mean, I don't know if I had it, but whatever it was, it was awful. I couldn't breathe. It was felt like mud and shards of glass in my lungs. And so then it got well, just well enough to get up and go into my control room and make a solo record and get over here. And now... You know, so I'm a little more um, careful than than uh, a lot of other people. <laughs> Just in case, it's, it's you have to be. I also was very ill to start the year. I may have had it too. I don't know. Uh, I it would not go away. I was sick yeah. for months, and uh, I'm just thrilled to be. There you one go. Piece. Respiratory, right? Yeah, well, yeah. And I never had those yeah. problems. I don't smoke. I never. I have other problems, but I never had respiratory problems. Yeah, exactly. In my whole life. So this is weird. I'm telling and then you, you, it's not not to be taken yeah. lightly. I mean, no. yeah, yeah. Of course not. And your voice is everything, right? You sing and you perform, and you need to do interviews. Yeah. You need need to be able to communicate. It's how we, you know, it's insane. <laughs> exactly. And then you know, when the, the few nights that I had, the, the really rough nights where I didn't know if I was going to make it till the morning where you realize how important a breath is. And then I kicked myself for those years that I smoked cigarettes because I had started late. I was like in my 20s. And like, who starts smoking in their 20s? And I was just like, damn it, man. I could have, all those times I could have stopped because, you know, breathing is, uh, is, is so connected to being alive. <laughs> that when you can't, you're just like, oh my God. You know, exactly. It was the 90s. You can't, no one can be accountable for what happened back then. Even me, no one. Yeah, we all did yeah. crazy things. Uh, um, no, can, can imagine. The oh yes, yes. But uh, yeah, it's a. Pl I'm glad you're well now, and I hope everyone in your circle is well. It's it's been a really crazy year, and then just emotionally, it's just been such a a tough time in the whole world. Yeah. I'm always. I'm more as much as I've loved. It, can't wait. To, I love this record, and I can't wait to chat with you about it. Of course, you know it's just it's hard for everybody to just kind of switch on to PR mode and talk about you know entertainment right now when there's so many you know important yeah. personal issues and you've always been very you know i think on on the you know concerned and sensitive about what's going on in the world not just yourself which i appreciate so yeah you know yeah. i'm checking in with everybody <laughs> yeah i'm just trying just checking checking in but uh, you have this amazing solo record coming out hum uh on ipecac records and um mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very personal and it's very introspective, and and your a lot of your your career, your all, your many many projects that have your personal touch on them have been personal. But this is mm -hmm. this seems very uh, uh, you know heavy, and you've been through a lot the last few years apparently. So mm -hmm. let's talk yeah. about the place you came from to make this music. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, as people might know, the spark was my O to Natasha after having lost Natasha. You know, I don't know how I, I, ba I barely, I, I, I think pretty much that Josh, uh, uh, you know, saw that it was could be really bad for me not, not being able to survive it. So he got me busy. He got me in, you know, Arctic Monkeys project. And we did uh, uh, Humbug and then Crooked Vultures and the touring. And then he brought me. 
uh, invited me to open up for Queens when it came down to South, when they came down to South America and I got to reconnect with my, you know, uh, my, me, my father for the first time and all the whole side of the family that had been a big mystery just because of the way things worked out. And that really helped me to kind of focus, you know, and I think uh, after Chris passed, uh, I started to kind of, um, not only had it brought back so much because obviously, you know, I mean, we all lose people, but you know, Natasha, and then I, I got to meet my, my, my father and have a relationship with him, but then he passed away right after my mom, like three weeks apart from each other. My mom had been going through, through illness and stuff. And then my uncle Peter passed and then, you know, who was my mentor when, since I was, he was put a, a guitar in my hand when I was like four years old. And he was kind of like the, the, the dude in the family I looked up to because multi-instrumentalist and kind of a rock star down here in, in, in South America and in Europe. And then Chris, and then I just kind of like hit a wall. I, I, I was trying to take care of myself. I, I got into some depression um, more than usual, you know, and, and I went through some health stuff. And so I decided to go and connect to life and book a solo tour last year, September and October. And it was amazing because I didn't know people would show up, but it was beautiful to Europe, you know, be, between 200 and 500 people, like, you know, uh, connecting with just this acoustic stuff I was doing, like Spark and stuff from Eleven and from my solo record, uh, uh, Fragments and Holes. And that was really, really am amazing. And so I got all this energy to, to make a solo record. Um, I already told Ipecac that that was the plan. Um, and they were just waiting for me and, and uh, I was just waiting to feel better to do it. So we pushed it to this year. Um, and then when I got back from, uh, from Europe in November, like I said, I got sick. And in that time of, of being in bed and not knowing, you know, if I was going to get better, because it was so mysterious, like the antibiotics didn't help. And then, uh, then one x-ray showed things were okay. Then, then, then three weeks later, it was filled with infection and like, you know, whatever. So I went through all this emergency room stuff and and then finally i somehow made it to uh beginning of february and i got up <laughs> literally just to, the first thing i had to do is uh, uh, mix this record that that i produced this really cool punk band called the devils from italy and then i knew it was time to make the record you know i i, I had, didn't have anything except a couple of bits of music the first track mermaid scream has that portuguese guitar arpeggio i had that on my instagram that i you know i that's my sketch pad i improvise and and then keep track of all these things that I did. And, and there, a lot of them are seedlings for future songs. And so I didn't really have any particular, um, I didn't prepare in terms of like working out songs and had lyrics and, but I kind of unconsciously felt with the, with, with the, the record, uh, what I wanted it to be. And, and, and because of everything, I, I wanted to express some things. I wanted to uh, kind of use it as a, as a way to get myself um, a little more at peace with the past and um, maybe uh, uh, explore uh, some feelings that I had and, and some of the pain that I had in song form. So almost like uh, internalize it in a way that would be healthier than, than you, know, ha you know, having it be like something that the past is, you know, this beautiful memories and legacy and all this other stuff, but it doesn't weigh me, weigh me down. It, it, I'm actually lifted for, from it, you know, uh, moving forward so that was the, the the what i was feeling and so i basically went in there and just started the record and 12 days later it was done i didn't i was writing the songs in sequence each song consequently came alive from from what the arc of the record i kept imagining this this album already exists somewhere um and i'm just channeling what it's going to be and so all the choices were were pretty much instinctive, you know. That that was that was the the feeling that I had very much like uh, during uh, Spark, which is like four intense days. And next thing you know, it's finished. <laughs> one song a day, and then I took one day off uh, to kind of you know get my bearings for a second. And it's it's crazy, but that's Hum is for me is is definitely my uh, one of the most uh, <laughs> honest and direct, and and it's it's. It's it's something that uh, that um, I've, music has become the last you know always was but even more so now this way for me to to heal myself and then also to to help myself forward like that those moments of connection <clears throat> that where I just kind of you know, happens 
through me really because I don't really feel I'm guiding it and I'm, I'm not intellectually like thinking uh, or I'm not using thinking uh, as much of uh, as just feeling and instinct and just daring to press record and just go for it you know and uh, yeah that's basically what what hum is you know this this uh, very very uh, um, kind of uh, lift myself up on my bootstraps kind of attempt at, at, at what's to come, which is uh, this, you know, hope, I'm dreaming of this life of, uh, of finding out who I am and just, just me as a person, as opposed to in the context of a very contextual human being up to this point in bands and in, in relationships and in production. When I, when I work with people, it's a contextual and now just asking myself, what do I want? Well, I basically want to travel the world, make music, um, enjoy life, make more music, try to help where I can, that kind of thing, you know? So that was my, which is funny because then you, you make a record like this and then you're locked down for three months. <laughs> so. um, yeah. What, where do we go with those? I finally got this thing done and now what, but um, yeah, thank you for sharing that. You know, yeah. I know you, it's, it's been hard and it's hard to get closure. Um, I do think that we, we do justice to the people we carry with us in our, you know, hearts who are exactly. gone. And, uh, you know, we can, our, we keep their memory alive. And you've been, you know, exactly. you've done that for, over the year. I was a huge 11 fan uh, and a huge fan of Natasha's, of course. And, um, you know, obviously you've done a, a marvelous job kind of preserving that legacy. I, I love seeing you pop up and play songs. Uh, I probably watched that YouTube video of you and Jack alone in the studio like 80 times. Um, right. <laughs> and it's a few years old, but I have watched that clip like over and over. And it's, you know, um, but it's, but it is, it is hard, obviously. And it's good that you're, you know, you're finding your way through this because you have created a whole other legacy of music that is not 11. That is all kinds of things. So this, this album is definitely mm, thank different. You. This album's a different flavor. You're welcome. This album's a really different flavor. Yeah. And what I like about the word, first of all, hum is very simple as a, as a, as a just mm -hmm. what a hum, humming is making music. You don't need mm -hmm. an instrument to do it. It comes from within. And what I like about mm -hmm. hum that kind of, I related to the music when I listen to it is a hum resonates, right? It's like literally the bare minimum mm -hmm. sound you can eat out as a human being. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, this is so perfect because you know, it, this is your, this album, this music is you resonating your feelings, you resonating from your soul. And I love that idea. And mm -hmm. I, I think that, that's the thing that I wanted to take away from this more than mm -hmm. anything. I was like, li li like, this is, you know, beautifully, a beautiful artistic statement. No, oh, thank you so much. I mean, the, the, I think before, before anything, I really had that, the, 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 the sound of the word and what it meant to me. And I also, uh, it has multidimensional it's beautiful beautifully put what you what you said it, it, it's um i was envisioning the word as also you know when you're near uh an electrical hum like like when you're near like a zzz, you know thing but that also exists like in nature you know if you just listen or in the silence i remember being a kid you know backpacking through king's canyon or or yosemite or or being out in the desert in, in joshua tree and and you just kind of like if you just are quiet and you're just listening for something and this this is humming that's the, the of, of like existence that's always there and uh it just obviously it's it's older i mean it has time doesn't really have anything to do with it but it, it was it's like the thing that behind the thing kind of and and that's 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 i mean having a title in, in, in for an album in your head is a really really powerful thing because because everything else just kind of like filled filled the blanks filled filled themselves in um everything in the in the record has to do with with that feeling um and just different aspects of things you know so yeah it's cool nice and of, and of course you're always well known for your guitar work as much as you are for your voice and what i, I you know i always say that you know electric guitar can hide a lot of mistakes and you mm -hmm. played in a lot of heavy bands, but when you dial it way down and play acoustic and especially finger style, you cannot make a mistake. It's so audible. Even if I like, you don't know your audience doesn't know the song you wrote until they get to live with it for a little while. But like, literally, yeah. you can, you have to be so precise. So you have a really uh, fan, you know, probably like the first time I really listened to a lot of your finger style playing and others, like you said, other instruments, Portuguese guitar. So mm -hmm. um, 
you know, you obviously got to practice, you have to practice those things. And I love that you talked about using Instagram as your, your scratch pad. That's genius. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I it's been years. With, yeah. I mean, sir, sir, you know, here, here's the thing, like, like, uh, okay. I like eight millimeter uh, uh, app, which is, you know, kind of film look. So there's a look to it. Right. And I just literally put it, I, I, I kind of look forward to that moment when somebody's going to say now, and I go to wherever spot I think, you know, I can be, you know, kind of private for a second. And I literally point it at myself and I press record. Sometimes I have a little bit of an idea of what I'm going to do, but it's very often, I, you know, I don't. And, and it's so funny because I guess part of it is like performing. It's like going on a stage because I know that I'm gonna, if I post it, people are going to be seeing it. And it's, you know, seven years ago, whenever, when I first started, even before there was video, when there was just those 15 second ones, you know, a lot of those 15 second ones became the seedlings for fragments and holes. And, and uh, it's become this thing where, where, um, if I don't, if I don't get to communicate through, through that, it's almost like I, I still having that has helped me a lot. Um, and, uh, it's a wonderful way to, to just, just keep yourself, you know, like connected because, um, it's not just like practicing, I, you know, practicing is boring to me. I mean, I started playing guitar a long time ago. I was four years old. I was, you know, more serious than a little four-year-old, but I learned all the chords and all the stuff. And then I was kind of a, a self-taught because my one experience with a teacher early on was unfortunately not very good. It was kind of a sadist in Mexico City. <laughs> mm. Hit my hand with a ruler when I couldn't make a bar chord uh, not buzz. I'm like, dude, I'm five. This guitar is huge. But, um, and, but at the same time, it led me to like just developing my ear. And then I just became so enamored with textures and sounds and then became fascinated with other instruments. And, and these things became like, like the, pos the possible colors and textures uh, and, and, and things to underscore the emotional content of a song or the, or the atmosphere or the, or the world that it lives in. And so I started collecting instruments, you know. And so I think I did most of my, most of my heavy uh, shedding in my teens, when, you know, with Jack Irons and Hello Slovak when we met in junior high. We went to his house every day after school and we played for four hours a day and then on the weekends, eight hours a day. And that, you know, was huge in terms of, the, you know, playing with, with, with other musicians. And then I just sit around and like, I started getting into in the classical music and jazz and, you know, classical and trying to learn Bach pieces and all this stuff. And I, I think I got, at one point I remember being like 17 years old with all this technique, you know, Holt, I'd heard, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you know Alan Holdsworth, but I, I had all these records by him and, and tapes like in the seventies and nobody knew who he was yet really. And, and I love the way that he basically played as if, you know, there was the guitar had no limits. And it was more like a horn. And so, but I found myself like one day I realized I had way more technique than ideas, you know, like literally it's just my head, my fingers are moving. Nothing, no, no music is being made or some music is being made, but not to the level that I, that I was hoping. So I did, I did a, this one year, where I tried not to touch it, you know. Uh, we played at rehearsals and, and at the gigs, and I just listened to hours of music. And I think to this day, the number one, uh, uh, the best thing I could have done for myself as a musician is to listen to endless hours of music from all cultures and time periods, uh, and try to find the common ground in that. You know, like what, why, why does it resonate with me? You know, could be Bulgarian choir, the Bulgarian choir stuff, Nuzer Fateh Ali Khan, Indian classical, you know, avant-garde jazz. Uh, I mean, you name it, all of it. Um, and I think that just kind of, that and, and, and being able to see somebody play an instrument. Like whenever, uh, I remember buying a Duduk. I don't know if you remember the, the movie, The Last Temptation of Christ, but there's a sound that sounds like a voice and a cello. You know, it's a Duduk. And it's basically like a piece of wood with a double reed on it. And I, I know that's, that's the instrument that this man is playing and it's so gorgeous. And so I bought it. I bought one and I made, and I tried to figure out like without how to, and it sounded like a really upset duck, you know, <laughs> and then I finally, and then I finally went to see him live and then he, the way that he angled it and like what is, you know, thing. And then the whole, and then I went home and I literally just the first second, I just go, ah, okay. Okay. See, I see, you know, it's all about like res, you know, going to see people play stuff, what their expressions are like and how to communicate through it. And, um, yeah, I think the fingerstyle thing was, you know, early on the Paco de Lucia, you know, flamenco had cassettes in the in 1970 when I was a kid, 71. And 
I wanted to be a flamenco guitar player for a little bit, but you know, it's, uh, uh, I remember this one guy said, well, you're not, you're not from Spain, you're not gypsy. I don't think it's going to work. I'm like, oh, why? Okay. But then, you know, Zeppelin and Queen and all that stuff kind of saved me. It was like, oh, electric guitar, you know, but I always kept the finger thing going. And then eventually I started to just, uh, just uh, focus on it a little bit more. I think the cigar box guitar that I got in the 2000s uh, that I used on the first time on Show Me Something. And then that's what I had with me on the Crooked Vultures tour. Um, that became the basis for, for uh, uh, Spark. M you know, Maddie making me that instrument and having this, this, this instrument, having this possibility of sounding so um, exotic and yet so down home. It could be Appalachian, it could be, uh, you know, Portuguese, it could be flamenco, it could be like, you know, uh, Arabic, um, Persian. Uh, it's, it's, and that, you know, obviously requires, so a lot of that stuff that I, that I kind of uh, scratched at when I was a kid started to come back. Um, and then I just, it just became part of it. It's just, it's just, it's such a, a short distance between uh, your, your mind and the instrument when you don't have a bunch of pedals, electric, you know, all the, it's literally just a little box and it has strings and a small neck and anywhere you go, you can put it, you can carry it and it's just right there. Um, and that's, I think, where the fingerstyle stuff really uh, started to come alive again, you know. And now it's just kind of there. I, 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 I can access it. And if I need to practice something that's particularly hard, I just practice it and record it real quick. And then, as a matter of fact, I had to, re I had to learn these songs on, on hum recently because I realized that I was moving so fast that I don't remember what it is, or what the tuning was. I didn't write it down. I figure it out now, but you know, I was just like, what is that? What did I play? I mean, it's already recorded and they, you know, anyway. Now you have to live with it. Um, yes. I don't want to, <laughs> yeah, right. I, I don't want to sidebar too bad, but I, I, I picked up that you just mentioned twice in like 10 minutes that uh, tw two times in your early life, people discouraged you. And I'm so pleased you didn't listen <laughs> because <laughs> I think for you, especially children, I, I also learned music as a child and, you know, it shapes you if you get a lot of bad lessons or, you know, a bad reaction with a teacher or anything that's, you know, Oh, I don't, you know, little kids, I don't yeah. like this. I'm done. You know, <laughs> we don't have a lot of patience. Yeah. So yeah. I'm so pleased. I'm so yeah. pleased you didn't listen. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> I mean, that's the thing is, 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 yeah, I mean, it's, 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 um, I just knew that I felt happiest uh, doing it, even even when I sucked and I was like, you know, it seemed so far away to be able to be anything like um, what I was listening to. But I, all, all I knew is that even while I was sucking and, and learning, I, I never, I've never felt, I had never felt so peaceful and so connected to, to existence as, as when I was uh, playing or listening to music. And so, Ain't nobody gonna talk me out of that feeling. You know what I mean? It's the kind of thing where you just like, and and yes, of course. I mean, it's it's unfortunate that there's not enough uh, support. You know, I mean, it doesn't have to be blind support where they tell you that you're a genius when you just play your first D chord. You know, but at the same time, you know, hey, it's, it's it, if you see somebody happy in what they're doing, then that's a beautiful thing. It's not it's not that easy to come by. You know, a, a passion in anything, anything that we do. So right on. Fuck them. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Check me out now. See, now I'm, I'm way, yeah. you know, it's, I'm not the, that little kid anymore, but it's good. I'm glad, I'm glad that worked out. I'm sure there's a lot of stories of people who were discouraged and put down the guitar and that was it. Um, yeah. So that's another yeah. thing that's it, it, uh, just, uh, just real quick, because I just thought about this. It's like one of the worst things I can read is if I post something and somebody says, oh, fuck, well, now it makes me want to quit the guitar. It's like, is that, is that supposed to be like a, like a compliment? Like that, that makes me very upset. I want you to be inspired just like I was inspired by all the, all the things, that, 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 all the amazing things I heard and, and people I saw to just like, oh, wow, this is so great. Okay, let me, you know, it's not, it's not a competition, <laughs> you know, it's, Everyone's got their own uh, uh, lifelong uh, path that you never get there. You can never arrive and go, well, I'm really now really did it. I'm, I'm this and that. It's a process, you know, and it's the process that is, that is, that is interesting and important and not arriving. It's just, okay, like you finish one thing and then just, okay, cool. That's great. All right. Next, you know, maybe you can spend a couple of days like partying about it and, you know, 
going out to dinner, look, I finished my record or like, Hey, want some wine, you know, cheers. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, a it's a really, really, it's really cool to, to be able to find, um, your calling, uh, or even change your mind about your calling in the middle of it too. It's like, you know, I mean, I never thought I was going to be involved in production and engineering and all that stuff. I just, I knew that recording, uh, my music was part of making music. So I got into, you know, being curious about microphones and tape machines early on. And then once I realized that I could fuck it up just as good as the famous producer and engineer, I'm like, why are we giving him 50 grand? Fuck that. I'll just, just use that to buy some equipment and let's do it ourselves. <laughs> I'm not going to, we're not going to make it worse than what he just did. No names. <laughs> oh, okay. That was my next thing. I was going to ask for names, but all right. I respect that. Um, uh, so I was going to say, I've had some good, there've been some good ones and been some not so, oh, not I'm so, sure. or at least, yeah, I mean, at least, at least a little, not that they were bad. They were just a little unconscious and didn't quite understand what was going on. You know, like mm. you don't, you know, you want to help an artist fulfill their vision. Not go, no, that's not your vision. This is your vision because the record company right. said your vision should sound like this because apparently it's making more money right this quarter. Ha <laughs> ha, right. Well, it is, I think anyway. there's also different kinds of, there's different kinds of producers. There's a producer that some bands need their help to come in and guide them. And there's other yeah. producers who just, I, I'll take in what you have created and I'll do something sonically with it and, you know, finish the product as opposed exactly. to, they don't, you didn't need, you didn't really ever need anyone to come in and write your songs for you. Some people do. So there's yeah. different kinds, right? Different and, kinds I, and, and as a producer, I've, I've, I've been available for all of that, whatever. Sometimes it's just like making, making great tea and coffee and, and making everyone feel good in the studio and recording it properly. You know, that's been that. And sometimes people say, hey, we need some help with this bridge here. It needs to do something that we can't find. I'm like, oh, yeah, so how about, how about this, you know? Um, whatever, whatever it is, it's, that's, and, and I think in terms of that side of my life, it's, it's, I think being on the other side of it really helped me to understand and be resonant, you know, and not be a dick about it. Like, you know, I'm not going to get a snare sound for eight hours, okay? That's not going to happen. <laughs> Hopefully, gosh, eight hours. That would... Oh, I, 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 I live, I live through that. I live through like, I'm serious. We just, it's $2,500 a day. I mean, how do we know how the snare is going to sound once the song's wrapped around it? You know, it doesn't make any right. sense. Yeah. Anyway. Right. Crazy. Um, so I, I, you know, I, uh, I take it that, uh, obviously you wrote this very quickly, hum. And, uh, I imagine that the, the, the guitar always come first in, in your songwriting style or for this album, or did you have some like lyrics sketched out too, or some ideas or? No, you know, the lyrics are usually the very last thing. What will happen is like, I'll have the, say for example, the, the uh, mermaid scream, you know, I have the arpeggio um, or even hum, hum I had a bit of hum too, which is the, I had the, the picking part. And so that was, that's the, you know, so, so, if I'm going to lay, lay something down that, that has to have a pulse, I will imagine the thing in my, first I'll, I'll, I'll finish playing it in real time, like in the, not recording it, but just like, okay, song goes like this. Then I find the feel of it. And then I'll, I'll listen, I'll hear that in my head and I'll do some percussion, you know, as opposed to just a click track. Cause that, that tends to be, so then I can, I can ebb and flow with where I imagine how the, how the verse pulls into the chorus and, and whatever, so it says, you know. Then I have that. Then I lay down the either the cigar box or the acoustic or the twelve string or the or the resonator or the Portuguese guitar as the bed. Um, I usually won't go for the. I'll start meditating about what the what this feels like in terms of the 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 lyric. And and sometimes it'll come uh, when I when I kind of just am humming it, and then some words come out and some some ideas. So then once I have. I, the last thing will be that that part. So then I start to flesh it out. The more percussion, add the textures. Okay, this I love for this to have harmonium, or this should have a kind of medieval sound. So I'm going to take my banjo and tune it in fourths and I mean in fifths and roots, and play it with a bow, which which I did on uh, hollowed bones and 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 Phoenix, you know, because I didn't have a hurdy gurdy, but I knew that if a banjo was going to go, you know. And uh, you know that the you know all those little touches. If morning comes, that that electric guitar that's atmospheric, that was one pass. I was just kind of reacting to it. Then then I'll you know I've been writing down little little lyric ideas, and then I'll finalize the lyric. 
tweak it a little bit, obviously, and then and then just press record and and you know sing sing the song, reading the lyric almost every time because I just wrote it. <laughs> and, then, and then you know just took you know a couple punch ins and maybe you know uh, try a different mic, you know that, that that kind of thing. It's and but it's literally in my in the my control room was like a rectangular room uh and i have like i don't know hundreds of things around me four or five different mics in different positions of different kind of personalities and um and then you know it just it's done and then i have dinner and then i mix it and i and i went to bed and 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 listen to the whatever i had done so far with one or two or three or four songs and then just imagine in that silence after the four songs finished before there was a fifth one imagine what what that might possibly be you know What's next? You know, how does it go? How does this album go? What does it do now? You know, and literally that's that's how it went. Um, the only one that was kind of really odd was uh, was nine because I took the day off between uh, eight and nine and ten. You know, there's ten songs in the record, and that and then that kind of cleared my head that that day, and I was just like, okay. And then I, I walked in, and and for some reason my mind's a drum machine. Okay, so I had my drum brute uh, drum machine, and it's got a randomizer mode you you do kind of create the pattern which is it was a simple pattern and then the randomizer makes it kind of play mode you know whatever you, it gets crazier so i just literally <laughs> performed that for about five and a half minutes that's before there was even a song so meaning perform like a letter play and then i tweak the 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 sounds so you know you can you know, open the kick and close the hat and put more delay more fuzz and that was the bit that was the bed and now then i ended up uh uh writing the bass line i think next you know on top of it and then just the song came together like that you know what i gotta, I gotta turn on a little light because i'm getting darker and darker here Hang on a second. is that better no that's great no okay worries. cool that was <laughs> It was such a strange pro I mean, process. I mean, it was kind of like a moment where, like, I, I just, it would be counterintuitive to imagine that the way the record was going, that there would be a tune that had this bizarro drum machine that that sound like a you know some some meth version of a Radiohead song had gone wrong. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, that's great. There, I, I feels like there's a lot of purity to making a record like this. You know, a lot of you know. I think there's you as a songwriter also, you know, you can spend a lot of time overthinking a thing. And I think there's like a really cool yeah. pur purity about how fast you made this record and how quickly it came together for you. Well, thank you. I mean, I, I, I know that there's, you know, there would be, I just haven't gotten to the point where I know how to, how to slightly tweak stuff uh, and think about things in the middle of a process like this, you know, I mean, because in my experience, so often when you tend to sit on things and try to uh, uh, kind of massage them and and repurpose them, all all the processes of trying to to improve it to this end goal, and then um, you record it. And very often, when you listen to the very first recording, which you did on a, on your voice memo or a rehearsal jam, there's something that the new one, which is perfected now, is missing. Not always, but very often, it's missing something. And what is that? It's this 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 kind of moment of inception, this kind of dangerous, uh, you know, this this dangerous but but satisfying nearness to the source. Like it, it's raw and and a little more of everything. It, it it's not you know it's not like um, refined, but it has this power which is very appealing to me. And so. I, you know, at least the last uh, three albums I've been, I've been drawing on, on that feeling, knowing that, you know, and going for trying to go for as many whole takes as possible and not like comping solos or just trying to go for, go for it. And if, and obviously if it's a total disaster and it's, it's awful, <laughs> I'm not going to keep it, but I really don't care to, you know, I mean, I can hear tons of the little mistakes that happen. Um, that happened in the in the recording process but not, none of it is 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 enough to uh um to sacrifice for like a perfect take because that that take that is raw that the raw one has something in it that it's it's the sound of someone not thinking and being in the moment you know it's the sound of somebody just completely lost in 
and almost like what happens when you imagine what happened in a ritualistic kind of like you know you transcend and you 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 lose you lose your physicality and you're you're just this thing and floating around in, in the ether kind of thing you know it's that that feeling that uh, that i love it's this um meditative and and powerful and then that's that's it's works it works well for me i think well especially with this music you know these songs very very cool uh i know right before we started you were talking about you had been on tour with the trio doing the euphoria morning stuff as a tribute mm -hmm. to chris um mm -hmm. and i and who knows what the world is going to look like as we come through this pandemic that we're still not done with but um have you given any thought to performing this album live are you going to do it as a solo or are you going to do it with your trio some combination i mean i think i think uh, uh um it's time to like um i would you know love to just just to do another tour acoustic tour and, and especially go to places that i i have never been acoustic solo you know um i did a little bit of playing in the u.s opening for for fistful of mercy years ago but I'd love to just, uh, you know, because it's 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 affordable. I mean, I you know, I, I could figure out a way to get inside a rental car and drive myself around. I would need to go to the, you know, play the U.S. and Canada, places I haven't been solo, you know. But ultimately, it would be really nice to have about maybe a four-piece uh, to do some of this acoustic stuff, you know, percussion, um, things that are very organic, harmonium, somebody else playing cigar box and acoustic, um, some you know, people that can sing nicely, uh, um, I, I do some of the, that stuff uh, with my trio um, in the middle of a set. We do kind of an acoustic version and it's really great. And that, that, that obviously, you know, once I build up to that point to be able to afford it and, and everybody gets, gets paid properly and, and we can travel well and stuff that I'd love to just have a more expanded version. Um, I'd love to take my trio to the rest, you know, to, to, the, to Europe and the States um, again, as soon as, that's possible uh, on many levels, you know. Um, obviously, I'm kind of, you know, with Ipecac's putting out this this record, and that it's they're super amazing and cool. And uh, but I, I don't operate in that kind of like big record company tour support and lots of stuff. And and you know the fans are so beautiful and amazing, and they're they're spread out everywhere. And I just like to be able to get to them first. And so the easiest thing is for me to show up with a cigar box and on a, on a train. <laughs> <laughs> for now we'll figure out the rest as it comes yeah we'll all go back to our teenagehood and busk on street corners for, for uh, money um, so awesome why not again with you know uh when when life gets hard we just take it back to the primal um, exactly i mean we used to we be just true we used to be troubadours uh and before recorded music you know it was like uh you know you either you know, you were just part, of, I mean, the composers, if it wasn't for the, you know, the, the, the countess and the church and, you know, playing at the court, it's like, you know, it's, it was it's just like, uh, it's crazy. Yeah, no, I mean, the whole idea of the trouble is so romantic, you know, but back then, I guess it was a lot of songs about what was happening up the, over the hill, you know, in the mm -hmm. village or the war far away, whatever. Yeah, I mean, I, I love, I love touring. I love traveling and I love playing. And that, and I love playing in unusual places, you know, um, not necessarily only clubs or theaters. There's outdoor amphitheaters. I, I played a beautiful uh, bookstore, art bookstore um, with a performance space in Milan. Um, I played a, a an amazing beer uh, place, and like the only beer place where they make the the I think the Barolo grape and and. and <laughs> in Italy it's the one place that makes beer and they have the best pizza ever and and the guy's a huge fan of a stoner and desert rock and so he was so happy it was there and uh you know he, ha he has a beer called the desert sessions it's, it's really it's really funny and it's amazing. Um, yeah and and the best pizza I ever had oh my god it's so good um and the beer too and and so you know that kind of thing is it's 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 uh it'd be fun like you said to busk you know it's just uh a tour of vineyards, for example, that would be pretty amazing. You know, some some kind of uh, interesting uh, live recordings from that tour, that's for sure. <laughs> right. You got to pace yourself. I think that record would actually, yeah, the hum record would actually be, you know, like a, the video has you sitting in the, like sort of the forest on a rock. And I can totally yeah. see the vineyard, the vineyard tour would be the perfect setting for like maybe a full hum album performance or something. 
Oh, that would, that would be totally amazing. I'd love to eventually do that, like maybe like a, a and film it with a, with with a with a band and an extended band. Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's uh, yeah, um, but we'll see what happens. I think I think you know uh, the rest of the year is probably out for that kind of thing. But it seems mm. some things are opening up slowly. You just need to to see how safe that is. Um, it's kind of weird to like have social distancing at a at a festival or you know. It's the, the, the entire idea is so based on us feeling each other's energy and like the audience being right there and, and, and like that feeling of community well, that is such a big part. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's maybe better to wait. I mean, you know, and you, only so many live stream shows can be, I mean, it's still better than, than nothing. And I, and I, I love, I've, I've, I've seen a few and I did a couple here, but um, you have to imagine uh, past the little, camera uh, light on your phone or computer the word that everyone's out there you can I, I almost kind of felt the connection but it's bizarre how, how this thing has just kind of hit the arts uh, uh live music and, and stuff and everybody involved in that too you know it's in, insane all the wonderful people that do all the uh, the live sound and the monitoring and the, you know even down to like the bartenders and clubs and the, you know everything it's crazy yeah, we are we are probably going to be the last uh, sector of life to get it back the way it was because everything we do depends on crowds, right? And people together and the energy, exactly. like you said, of everyone. But I hope mm -hmm. I hope I'm I'm trying to be positive. And um, yeah, no. I think as we, as we wind this down, I think just um, I don't know if it's fully fair of me to ask, but I'm always compelled to ask sort of a final question as a wild card question. So. Is it okay, possible? Cool. You've made so much music and you've made, you know, worked on so many albums in different capacities. Do you have a favorite album you've ever made uh, or worked on? Is that fair to even ask? Yeah, I no. mean, you can, I, I, okay. No, 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 no absolutely. I mean, I, I, I would have to answer with, with, with two very close to, to each other, you know? I think the first, the, my favorite, most favorite album I've ever been a part of is definitely Euphoria Morning, because Chris, Natasha, and I locked ourselves into our, in our house for seven months and had all these amazing friends and talented badasses come and be, and be part of it. You know, Matt Cameron and Bill Rieflin and um, uh, Josh Freeze and and uh, Rick Markman, you know, and and uh, Jason Faulkner. And that that was such a beautiful moment because Chris enabled uh, us to have a studio because he invited Al Kafar, the president of AM, to our house because. After after '96, when he came to stay with us after Sun Garden stopped that first time, um, and he kind of like said, "Listen to their stuff," and then Al goes, "That's beautiful. I want to offer you a record deal." And, uh, and then we said, "Okay, how about if we take that record deal, and we just buy a studio with the money for the record deal?" And he says, "That's crazy. No one's ever done that before." And okay, sure, why not? And next thing you know, we have a studio. We record Evan Guard Dog with it, and then. We do Euphoria Morning with it, you know, and uh, anyway, so it was this total uh, autonomy, like, like no one knew, it's like, it was so, so amazing to just sit around and like, I mean, Natasha was rolling her eyes sometimes because, because we'd be like five hours into, into like experimenting with this amp, with that pedal, with this guitar, with this, you know, because we could, you know, it's like, it's not, whatever, we're here, it's home, you know, sometimes we go to the beach. Sometimes we just watch movies, and and that was a really special uh, 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 creative burst for all of us, and we could explore and be like kids. The next, uh, the one that's close second is is Howling Book, which is the album, the last eleven album, because Jack mm -hmm. had come back after uh, being in Pearl Jam, and we did that record, and it was I think to me a very mature record. I mean, there's, there's amazing songs on Avant Garde, I think, and other records, but this one just felt like you know. We just relax. We just, you know, there's no label. We're not gonna fuck with that anymore because no one never really pushed us. So let's just put it, uh, put it out ourselves, however we can. We're just making this record because we love music and and that, you know. But yeah, so if there's gonna be just one, it would be your forty morning, and then Howling Book second. Nice. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned Bill. Also, yeah. rest in peace. He just passed away. Yeah, rest and, in um, peace, man. So sad. And I had just seen him a couple of years ago with Crimson, and. Um, King Crimson. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, um, you know, I have to say, I appreciate you for sharing all this stuff. And, and it's, uh, it's important that we learn to take these losses and make something positive out of them. Uh, I'm not always good at that mm -hmm. in my life, but I, I appreciate that you are. 
and you have and you continue to and um this record's amazing and i hope everybody gets to hear it um and i hope you get to get home thank you soon <laughs> what, a, what, what, a, what a time in the world but yeah i hope you get to you know come back here and we get to see you tour behind this great record and uh come see you in person yeah thank you thank you Thank you. Uh, I, I can't wait. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. You know, it'll, it'll, it'll happen when it happens. I'm going to do it safely. And there's no real rush right now. We kind of, you know, it's almost like you say, I took the year off. It's kind of getting close to that. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. well, it's not off, obviously, but, but, uh, yeah. but um, it's important to be, to be patient and, and, and not to worry about it. And, and actually, yeah, the advantage is being that one, one can take a little more time to you know start i mean obviously like you can see in a lot of places nature's bouncing back really fiercely and, and beautifully and then you realize a lot of things are superfluous that we had before like i don't you know like i was just talking to a friend of mine about this he says, hey, we've been locked down in three months and you know what like i miss a few friends and i miss going uh, being able to go out on a walk and, and i miss seeing live music and stuff but there's all this other stuff that i don't really it doesn't didn't kill me not to have it you know what i mean a lot of uh it's kind of like you know, kind of focuses the the, the fine, to a fine point all the priorities, uh, not the priorities, but the but the things that make you feel the best, you know. And obviously, it's hard missing your family and 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 your friends and your loved ones. But you know, at least you know we can communicate a little bit, you know, through the FaceTimes and whatever. But playing live is 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 really and 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 being in the studio, and rehearsing, uh, being because I've I've been here, but I haven't been able to be with my my bros, you know, my band and, 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 uh, um, that's always you know, intense, you know, but it'll come. It's, it's soon. We'll get, get past, get, get through this as well. We will. We've been resilient. We are, <laughs> we are resilient. And, uh, keep yeah. your spirits up and maybe make some more new music. We'll, we'll be looking out for whatever's coming next. Awesome. Week. On top of this, this Thank album. you, buddy. Thanks, Alan. All I right. really appreciate you, your time. All right. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Take Take care. Care.